Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls are doing? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Today we're going to be talking about Selection Sort. Now, it's not that much better than Bubble Sort, but it's still worth noting. Because if you're taking a course in data structures and algorithms, you're probably going to come past this and, and Insertion Sort and a, a bunch of those. So I'm going to go through all of these, but the one on the table today is Selection Sort. Now, it has the same complexity n to the power of 2 where n is the number of elements in the array uh, and or to be sorted or whatever and it's an exponential growth because it's to the power of 2 what we want is o n a linear growth for a better uh, what do you call it a better sorting algorithm but this isn't one so that's part of the con it's not really o n and it's still slow yes uh, the speed is slow to medium yes uh, quick to write quicker than bubble sort uh, does not go through the whole array for comparisons every time what I mean is it won't really it will have a sorted part of the array and an unsorted part and it will only go through the unsorted part once another element is sorted it will just the, uh, the unsorted part will get smaller and smaller and smaller uh, and it keeps track of a minimum index and it just swaps once bubble sort keeps swapping stuff as soon as it finds it uh, but selection sort actually just keeps track of which element is the smallest one that has been found this uh, this run and it will swap it at the end so we'll get started right right away uh, what you need is an int uh, index min or a min index let's just say min index this will keep track of the smallest element and what index that smallest element is at in our array we'll use this array now before I get started as well I just want to show you the code it's the same code as we wrote in the last tutorial with the bubble sort uh, the only thing I changed is this uh, this name here and obviously I took the code away from the old bubble sort and uh, selection sort right here just change the call name to that everything else is the same now if you haven't written this before this is the first video you're watching go ahead and copy all this code right here just write it in pause the video and just write it in uh, and we'll get started so what you need is basically min index like I said you want one for loop which is gonna go through the whole array or the whole whole sorting right the whole array uh, a number of times so number of elements number of times basically minus one and I'll explain why there is a minus one there and we'll have another for loop the internal one which will go through each element for each pass uh, and this one will go to number of elements sorry Element, elements please not minus one here just here uh, and this is gonna start at i plus one and we're gonna change all of these to j now don't worry about the size t either size t is whatever it's just an integer don't worry about it use that or just write change this to int if you want it doesn't matter it's just a version of a integer um so yeah let's see so we have int i and int j j starts at i plus 1 so that would be 0 plus 1 in the first case so it would start at 1 so you see if, if i is at 0 j will start at 1 so we'll, we won't start at the same element number of elements minus 1 is there just for that reason now if you're in this array and you're at the end and this wasn't minus 1 so this loop i would be at 7 and j would try to access something at 7 plus 1 or i plus 1 that will be outside of the array there is nothing there so if we have minus one whoops sorry if we have minus one we'll maximum we'll get to this element right here we'll uh, we won't go to the last one we'll go to the second to last one so we'll be here and then in the loop within that we'll check i plus one so we'll uh, compare five to seven and we won't go out of the bounds so it's really important to note Play around with it, try to draw it out, and you'll understand it, I'm sure. But for now, this is this is what you want to do. Now, another important thing is to set min index to i every time in this big loop. And that means that the this is going to keep track of the smallest number we have right now, like I said. And it's going to assume. So this is gonna we're going to start by assuming that i, wherever i is, is the smallest number we have right now. And then we're going to go in here, and we're going to say if array at min index or array at j sorry j is smaller than array at minimum index 
we're gonna set min index to J. Uh, there we go. Now what is what does that mean? Well, min index is I. So in our first in our first run, I is gonna be at this position zero, right? So that's twenty, our number twenty. Um, we're gonna start at I. Yep, at zero, and the min index is gonna be zero. So this is the smallest number we know right now at this point then we'll get into this for loop and j will start at i plus one so zero plus one it will start here and it will go through the whole array from this point and checking it will go through the whole array checking if array at position j if 10 in this case in the first case is less than array at minimum index so 20 if it's smaller then we're going to set min index to j. So the new min index is going to be 10 in this case. Now the next time this little for loop runs it will be at 30. Now min index, it will check array at j, 30, is that equal to array at min index? Min index is now 10, or, or 1 in this case. It will be 1, but the value there is 10. So is that smaller? j is smaller than, it's 30 smaller than 10? No. So nothing's going to happen. Min index is still 1. It's still at 10. The next loop, we're checking j. j is uh, 3 now. So we're checking 2. Is 2 smaller than 10? Yes, it is. Min index is j. And this is the last thing that's going to happen this run because less than, right? So if we get to another 2 here, it won't swap. It will just say, okay, well, it's already smaller or it's equal to, so it won't swap. So Or it won't. Uh, change the value of min index. So the final one will be this in the first run. It will be this number two here. Then what happens is that when we get out of here, okay, we get out of here and we say if array at min index is not equal to array at i, I'll explain this, don't worry, swap array at min index to array at i. Now what the hell does this mean? What the hell is this? What am I doing here? A lot of you probably figured it out. If you have not, I'm sorry. I'll explain it now. Uh, if array at min index, which is 10 in our case right now, is, um, is or 20, sorry. Sorry, no, array at min index. Sorry, no, min index is 2. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's 2. Right now, it's 3. I mean, it's the value there is 2. So the value at min index, is it? not equals to array at i and remember i was still one or zero zero it was still the value there is 20. so if two is not the same as 20 then we'll swap it the reason we have this we don't want to do unnecessary swaps now um, imagine if it was a 20 here and that was the final element and it was uh, there was the smallest one we could find we don't want to swap we just want to say okay it was the same number Okay, we don't do anything. We just leave it alone, just the way it is. But in this case, it's 2, so it's going to be swapped. Because it's important. We want the smallest numbers to the left. Now, that will be the sorted part. Now, the next time we run this, i will be 1. And j will become uh, i plus 1, which is 2. So, we'll start checking 10 with 30. That's what we'll start with. Now, the 2 here, there will be a 2 here later, and there will be a 20 here. Right? We'll ignore this now, from now on. And the next time we sort, we'll have two sorted numbers. We'll start from here, and here, and here, and here. So we'll keep going like this. And we'll just sort the part that is unsorted. So let me just do this. Now let me see, if I run this, this should work. I hope I explained that properly. We have a sorted array. Now to show this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a for loop that is going to go to number of elements, and I'm going to change this to k because we're already using i and j. I'm just going to use change that to k. Uh, j we could have used because it's outside of the scope, but whatever, we'll use k. Uh, std cout array at position k and add one of these. std cout uh, new line. So we're just going to print out, every time we swap something, we're going to print it out. And here what I'm going to do so I'm also going to increase number of comparisons. This is the n or number of swaps, whatever. And we'll see how many swaps there will be. 17 swaps. And what happened? Well, our first array here, like I said, the first thing here is 20. So our 20 was swapped with the 2 that was there. 
all right 20 to 2 then the next run uh, the 10 was checked with another 2 over here and it was swapped see and in the other one 30 was checked with the other 2 here and which was swapped here see where this 30 is where this 2 was there's a 30 now and where this 30 was there's a 2 now and so on and so on and so on am I even recording yes I am okay cool good so if you just study this and you try to imagine it in your head and you try to play around with this you'll understand kind of how it works now I'm sorry again if it wasn't really 100% clear I'm trying to do my best here uh, but as you can see anyway it's not too too hard um, whoops now if I if I check how many times it compared something that will be in here I think that's in this for loop number of comparisons so this is how many comparisons we do we do 190 comparisons versus 247 or what there were before uh, how many times well it was about what was it 19 something in here how many times we swapped so it was a lot less uh, performance wise there so that's good that's good that's selection sort for you guys and girls There's nothing too too difficult like I said just take this code copy it I'm sorry I didn't go through all this other main code with you uh, but yeah it's here if you need it just copy all of it um, and you can just play around with this put a lot of random numbers in here see if it works if it will sort it uh, but yeah until next time keep learning keep working hard take care of yourselves and all that stuff um, and then next time we'll probably go through another uh, sorting algorithm if not an optimized version of this but yeah take care best of luck with everything and i'll see you guys in the next one all right bye bye